Since he shifted gears from the military to politics, Bolsonaro ascended quickly, energizing a newly formed base. With a strong stance against crime and other hot topics, Bolsonaro is viewed as a pro-life, anti-establishment, pro-gun politician. He's defended against accusations made against him, saying he's not far-right but simply right-wing. How does a boy from Sao Paulo become the most powerful force in the country? How did Jair Bolsonaro get to where he is? Welcome to Neapolitan. Today we'll be looking at the 38th president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. His quick rise to the top of Brazilian politics came after a long military career. He excited a country with his promises and values, but has suffered drops in popularity amid scandal, controversy, and continued criticism. He fails to deliver on campaign promises, and Brazil is hit hard by the ongoing pandemic. We're going to take a dive into where he's from, how he got here, and look at the man he is today. We'll be looking at it broken down into three unique sections, like Neapolitan ice cream, the vanilla, the who, what, where, and one of the folks that changed the world, chocolate, that flavor punch, Controversy and adversity make lives so interesting. And the strawberry, the lasting legacy and lick that all Neapolitan lives come with. That all Neapolitan lives come with. If you're interested in other videos like this, or different in-depth looks at essential people throughout history, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel with post notifications on, so you never miss a single one. Without further ado, let's get into it. Vanilla Born March 21, 1955 in Glissario, Sao Paulo, to parents Percy Geraldo Bolsonaro and Olinda Bonturi. He grew up spending most of his childhood moving around Sao Paulo with his family, living in Riberia, Jundai, and Santa Baris, before settling in El Dorado, where he grew up with five brothers. He was named as a tribute to Jair da Rosa Pinta, a footballer at his birth, with whom he shares a birthday. In his final years of school, Jair was admitted to Escola Preparatoria de Cadetes do Exorito, the Brazilian Army Prep School, entering in 1973. He then, upon graduation, went to the Academia Militar das Alculas Negras in 1974, graduating as an artillery officer in 1973. Bolsonaro served in the 9th Field Artillery Group, later studying at the Army Physical Training School in Rio de Janeiro, and then serving in the 21st Field Artillery Group and the 8th Paratrooper Field Artillery Group within the same city. Superior officers regarded a young Bolsonaro as aggressive, with an excessive ambition for financial and economic gain. This was referring to his attempt to mine gold in Bahia State. He claimed the activity was just a hobby for his mental health. His rise to popularity came in 1986 when he gave an interview with the magazine Via. He complained about subpar military salaries, claiming that the high command was firing officers due to budgetary constraints, not because of the claimed deviations of conduct they had been claiming to the press. Despite being thoroughly reprimanded by his superiors, Bolsonaro received high praise from fellow officers and their wives, quickly becoming a household name among hardliners and right-wingers. These groups had become disenchanted with Brazil's new civilian democratic government, and were more open to the objection. In October 1987, Bolsonaro came under the accusation that, according to Vija, he and a colleague had plans to plant bombs in military units in Rio. He called the allegations a fantasy, but the magazine would publish detailed sketches, allegedly drawn by Jair in the next issue. An investigation by a military administrative bureau found Bolsonaro guilty, unanimously decided they deemed he had a serious personality deviation and professional deformation and lied through the process when denying frequent contact with Via. The Supreme Military Court would go on to analyze his case. The general in charge of reporting the issue voted to acquit Bolsonaro, arguing that he had already been penalized for the initial article. There was no testimonial evidence of his bomb planting plans. He was acquitted in the end by the majority of the court. Just after the ruling, however, Bolsonaro left the army to begin his political career, having served for 15 years and reaching the rank of captain. He entered politics in 1988,
becoming city councilor in the Rio de Janeiro by election, representing the Christian Democratic Party. According to his son Flavio, he reportedly was a candidate for a councilor because it was the only option Bolsonaro had at the moment to avoid persecution. His entry into politics was by chance, as he had desired to continue military service instead but couldn't. He'd only spent two years in the position, during which time he was described as a quiet, discreet, and conservative counselor, but showed very little participation. He used this time mainly to give military causes visibility, such as retirement benefits for former officers. Bolsonaro served seven consecutive terms as a federal deputy for the first Christian Democratic Party between 1991 and 2018. During this time, he was affiliated with several other Brazilian political parties. In 2014, he gained the most votes in Rio for any congressman, with over 465,000. During 27 years of service in the Brazilian National Congress, he put forward one constitutional amendment and around 171 bills, only two of which became laws. Bolsonaro claimed persecution by the left-wing parties and said that most congressmen did not vote on the agenda but by who authored the bill. Soon Bolsonaro switched to the Social Liberal Party's PSL, abandoning the Social Christian Party. His arrival to the party marked the PSL's adoption of more right-wing conservative positions as Livre's Social Liberal Group announced its departure from the PSL. In 2018, Bolsonaro was nominated by the PSL for president in the 2018 election, and he also gained an endorsement from the Brazilian Labor Renewal Party. His candidacy was made official on August 6, though it was contested at first by two lawsuits that would later be deferred by the Superior Electoral Court. He named his running mate, retired Army General Antonio Hamilton Moreau, at the same time. His early campaign behavior was tame, according to pundits as he seemed to moderate his tone to be less confrontational and aggressive. He supported less government intervention in the economy, maintained a tough stance on crime, and defended traditional family values. He planned to cut taxes, especially on inheritances and businesses, to help generate growth and fight unemployment. He promised to restore security amid record highs in crime and rampant political corruption. These promises and beliefs won him substantial popular support. Bolsonaro was the first candidate for president to raise over a million in donations from the public. He averaged around $17,000 per day with the first 59 days. After the Workers' Party candidate Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva was arrested in 2018, Bolsonaro became the frontrunner in the election, favored by significant opinion polls. The first round election occurred in October of 2018 where he finished in first place with 46% of the popular vote. However, since he failed to get more than 50%, he faced opponent Haddad in the runoff on the 28th. He eventually won the runoff with over 55% of the votes and took office as the 38th president of Brazil on January 1, 2019. Chocolate during the campaign, academics repeatedly raised concerns about the consequences of Bolsonaro's rise in Brazilian democracy. A historian at the New School for Social Research, who specialized in fascism, wrote that his vocabulary recalled the rhetoric behind Nazi policies of persecution and victimization. He concluded that perhaps sounding like a Nazi would not make him one, but that could change if he was in power. Yale philosopher Jason Stanley said Bolsonaro, uses more tactics associated with fascism than the then-American president Donald Trump. Others claim that he was clearly authoritarian, though not necessarily a fascist, and some outright dismiss the concerns of fascism or populist labels for him altogether. Another controversial aspect of the campaign was the alleged use of illegal digital communication strategies, claiming Bolsonaro had been getting a helping hand from a group of entrepreneurs who were bankrolling a campaign to bombard the messaging app WhatsApp with fake news about Haddad. These suspicions led to a formal investigation and were met with details of wrongdoing by Bolsonaro and their allies. This came out alongside Taisei Fejo's allegation of being among those paid to feed fake news to supporters. On September 6, 2018, Bolsonaro was stabbed in the abdomen while campaigning. While first believed to be superficial, his son later said that it was worse than previously thought and that he likely wouldn't be able to campaign personally. The attacker was identified and arrested by police, 
a socialism and liberty party member who believed himself on a mission from God. His social media posts had long since criticized Bolsonaro and Tamir. Still, initial investigations concluded that he had no outside help from political organizations. A medical report concluded that the attacker, named Odelio Bespo de Oliveira, was mentally disturbed with a permanent paranoid delusion disorder. The federal court found him not liable for his actions. Bolsonaro was released from the hospital a month after the attack. Thousands took to the street to protest Bolsonaro and his stances on the same weekend. In support of the candidate, these protests were among other rallies in 16 of the states. Despite all of this, Bolsonaro was sworn in on January 1st, succeeding the previous president, Michel Temer. Early on, he focused primarily on domestic and economic issues, ranging from tax reform to changes in Social Security. He faced an uphill battle with Congress as he rolled out other policies. Bolsonaro stripped the Indigenous Affairs Agency F -U -N -A -I, of the responsibility to identify and demarcate indigenous lands. He argued that they had tiny, isolated populations and proposed to instead integrate them with larger Brazilian society. Critics feared that integration would lead Brazilian Amerindians to suffer cultural assimilation. Strawberry since his inauguration, his popularity has been sliding on a decline. One survey published in May of 2019 showed that 34% of respondents described the administration as good, 26% as regular, and 36% as bad or awful. 4% did not respond. This marked the first time the Brazilians had rejected the politics of Bolsonaro rather than continuing to affirm them. After allegations of campaign finance fraud, he fired his top advisor and general secretary, Gustavo Bebiano. The party was accused of diverting public campaign funds to candidates who never ran. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic in Brazil, Bolsonaro and his administration were accused of downplaying the crisis. This continued even as numbers climbed exponentially in Brazil by mid-2020. Bolsonaro claimed that COVID-19 was no deadlier than the flu, prioritizing the economic recovery rather than the health crisis. As of early 2021, in fact, showed an uptick in the Brazilian economy, though slowly and inconsistent. However, the pandemic threatened to undo the progress. Bolsonaro claimed COVID-19 was being exaggerated by the press and other opposing politicians as a fantasy the media created. Bolsonaro's approval ratings began to recover in the middle of the pandemic, reaching their peak since his inauguration. In November of 2020, he said he wouldn't take any vaccines for COVID-19, but later walked it back, saying he would support one if the Brazilian health agency deemed it safe. Within the same broadcast as the latter, he blasted the use of face masks as the last taboo to fall. Bolsonaro's approval dropped once again in 2021, in large part due to the COVID-19 response, vaccine controversies, and the economic crisis that began on his watch. YouTube soon began removing videos posted by Bolsonaro, spreading misinformation about the virus, totaling 15 altogether, including one in which Brazil's former health minister compared the virus to HIV, and others where Bolsonaro actively criticized efforts to stop the spread. Within a month, a scandal broke dubbed Vaccine Gay. Months had passed of denying offers of vaccines and bartering the cost, as Bolsonaro's government made a deal to buy the unapproved Corvaxin vaccine from the Indian company, Bharat Biotech. They had reportedly paid the company 10 times more than the agreed-upon amount. The irregularities weren't found in the price but instead a $45 million payment to a company in Singapore. By October 26, 2021, a Senate committee had approved a report calling for Bolsonaro to face criminal charges, including crimes against humanity, for handling the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2022, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Brazil had gained new attention over its reportedly neutral stance against the aggression, refusing to take sides, saying that they are on the side of world peace. It was noted that shortly before the invasion, he had angered Western allies by saying he was in solidarity with Russia, without elaborating. However, it is known that Russian fertilizers are a crucial part of Brazil's sizable agricultural business sector. If you like this video and want to see more like it, then make sure to leave a like.
so we know what you think and can continue to bring you the kind of videos you want to see. Let us know if you think there was anything we missed or if you'd like to see someone in particular in the future. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the material we've shown or other videos like this. Check out the other videos on this channel for fascinating looks into historical figures like this. Until next time, this has been Neapolitan and we'll see you around.